Alright, we're gonna do another review of a Raw episode. I believe this is my second one. Let's just go get this show on the road. So it starts off with a promo of CM Punk in the beginning. CM Punk's just rehashing a lot of what's been said before and what's happened in the past. And really, I don't like these kinds of promos. Raw's not good with rehashing previous information to a good promo. They're more superior with introducing new subplots. Triple H shows up and then goes from all this rehashing drama to asking why did I bring you back and then it turns into this thing where CM Punk's trying to talk shit and Triple H is trying to talk shit but he doesn't care I can tell he doesn't really give a shit for good reasons it's not a very good promo CM Punk is speaking generic trash about Triple H and his relationship with his wife and how Triple H is overrated that's quite boring it's been said before and we get a divas battle royale where I don't care what happens but regardless we have the commentators joining with Kelly Kelly who's joining a commentary and it's a lot of recycled Featuring, uh, you know how when there's a Divas match and then there's another Divas who's on commentary? It recycles a lot of that stuff. Same insults to Michael Cole, Jerry the King Lawler. It's a very rudimentary use of commentary. Regardless, uh, Beth Phoenix comes out the winner, her sexy ass. I really want to fuck her. That sounds wrong to say, but she beats the shit out of Kelly Kelly, thus turning heel. She calls her a whore. I don't care. Alright, um, what's next? We got a match between Mysterio and John Morrison against R Truth and Miz. Miz has gotten better at, I guess, you showcasing a good move set. Which he lost when he became a heel champion, where he used very generic moves and his finisher to end matches, and they really didn't utilize him properly. But now that he's out of that championship title position, he's going back to showcasing good move sets. One of the things I noticed. One of the things I noticed is that um, they broke cliches. John Morrison does a Starship pain and Miz pulls R Truth who's grounded out of the way, it matches an end of a pinfall right there, it extends a little, and then it ends with our troops specific to John Morrison finisher, then the pinfall. So it's an extended cliche, which is a different cliche. Next you got a promo of Alex Riley and Dolph Ziggler. Again, Dolph Ziggler is talking about how much of shit he happens to be, even though he's stuck on mid-card. Lost his match to John Moore, to John Cena and Randy Orton, and they're the high carters. Whether they they have a title or not, they always end up maining event matches. Okay, so then Riley comes out of nowhere, makes bad analogies comparing Dolph Ziggler's relationship to Vicky Guerrero as his relationship to The Miz, and he says a lot of generic. Crap too. We didn't hear. We already heard this stuff. Dissing Dolph Ziggler from Stone Cold, telling him to drop Vicky Guerrero, and of course Vicky's pissed. All right, then we got the tag team match between the Nexus and Long Island Ice Tino, which is Zack Ryder and Santino Morella, and that's a good match in the sense that it passes by very quickly. And again. More, a writer became popular through grassroots, through his internet fame, and WWE's gave him an alternative side match against Michael Cole where he won, made him the guest host of SmackDown, and gave him this tag team match. They really don't know what to do with him. Of course, they jobbed to the new Nexus. Ouch. Okay, then there's Alberto Del Rio versus Evan Bourne. Of course, I mean, yeah, 
of course you know who's gonna win. Evan Bourne's jobbed even more painfully than usual this time, and he not only lost through pinfall through the cross arm breaker, but he received another cross arm breaker. Now he's dropping so hard we can't even see him showcase that many good moves. But he did showcase some great on the mat moves. I'm glad that Evan Bourne's very well rounded. He's not just a high flyer, he also has a lot of on the mat techniques. They really need to push him again instead of just giving him a bunch of what can I say? Upsets. The final promo is one where like Vince McMahon's ass buddy interrupts Triple H and tells him to strip John Cena of the title. John Cena comes out of nowhere and talks shit to the guy and says he'll smack him. Triple H doesn't care. He eventually leaves. CM Punk arrives. John Cena and CM Punk argue like little bitches now. So I don't know why people are sucking both of their dicks. And then Triple H is basically saying, Alright guys, you need to get, stop complaining like little bitches. And then he gives obvious match an undisputed WWE Championship match and WWE Championship versus WWE Champion. Of course, then they raise their titles consecutively, showing their consecutive themes. That's it. What I don't understand is that there was another match like this. It was John Cena versus JBL at Judgment Day 2005. JBL considers himself the WWE Championship champion anyway because he had a traditional championship that he lost during WrestleMania 2005 against John Cena. John Cena had a new WWE Championship and they basically fought to see which title was the legitimate title. It was, and of course there was an I Quit match and probably the best I Quit match from anyone since it was executed perfectly. Alright, so that's all I got to say. If I were to evaluate this episode, I'd say that they don't understand that for us to be amused, you gotta surprise us. I know being unpredictable is extremely challenging without being completely random, but Again, there's going to be slow, boring episodes like this. There's going to be episodes where the promos are interesting. What I'm disappointed in is that there's only four matches here. So, this is another Mr. Wonka 7 video, and suck my dick.